In our previous video, I mentioned that us releasing those videos would not really change anything, but it would make people more vocal about the disdain that they were feeling that we expressed in our previous videos. And that's exactly what happened. So there have been many comments, you know, there's been neutral, you know, positive, negative comments. We have not deleted any comments but there have been people to post comments and delete. So we did start taking screenshots of comments before people had a chance to delete them. So what I'm gonna start off addressing are some of the deleted comments that were posted by someone who would call herself my sister, who would say that she's been, you know, a, a best friend to me, um, Shaka Sis. So I'm gonna post those now and you can pause the video and read them for yourself. This is the original comment posted by Shaka Sis Kanamsanu. She took down this comment, edited it, and reposted a similar comment, which you can probably see in the comments now. Kanamsanu or Shaka Sis was one of two women who were sent to really try to discredit my character. And after reading both of their statements, you will see that they were never really friends to me to begin with. But I do want to share a brief summary of what has transpired over the last few years and why I put up a boundary with the both of them. Um, so I'm going to start with Kanamsanu. Kanamsanu, this is directly to you. Um, I'm really going to start with the things that have endeared me to you over the years. I really admired your perseverance from the death of your father, moving from St. Lucia to Brooklyn and having to deal with that transition of being in a new place, dealing with that recent loss, dealing with, you know, the lack of emotional support that you felt from your mother and really being determined not to let that dim your light. Um, I also have always admired how much of a networker and people connector you are. I've marveled at your seamless, um, effortless creativity and music and fashion. As a mother, you've been really determined to provide your daughters all the love and support that you didn't feel. And it's very apparent. You can see that they have really been poured into and it's really reflected in how amazing they are. Um, these things being true though, you haven't been a friend to me for some time. And you know, since you put your statements out there, I have to be honest with you about that. I accepted this fact and I thought, you know, you don't always get where you give and i said this can be you know a friendship that i know is not going to really be that supportive of me but that i could be supportive to you and you know like all unsustainable things it, it was destined to come to an end but you know you wrote that you're, you're very disappointed in me but i have to say that i'm equally disappointed in your response and your behavior so um, some time ago when you admitted yeah. getting so close but not becoming fully intimate with the person who introduced me to Osara said, who sent me Maduna Tear Volume 1, who you knew at that time, I, I really thought that was like my soulmate, you know? So when you shared that to me, I said, you know what? Um, when people can do better, they do do better. And I knew that, okay, this person has not shown me that they're so trustworthy, but they're in a place where they're working on just becoming a better person, working on their spiritual development. So I felt like it was a relationship that I could still engage in and have some fellowship, you know, with someone my age. 
So, um, over the years of us being single, I confided in you after Ron Nefron Men's advances. And I told you I wondered what it would be like if I were to be married into his family. I analyzed what I thought would be the downsides and the upsides of that situation. You opened up to me about your desire for a relationship with Shekin Bakenti. And though outwardly similar, I, our values and motivations really could not have been more different. Although I did very badly want to have family, you know, I wanted stability, I wanted security. I also was really looking for a friend, um, an equal, someone to really grow with together. And that was kind of like a hesitation for me to be in a relationship with a super, you know, age difference or power differential. I always say, and in my opinion, those kinds of relationships, oftentimes I felt like, you know, the, the husband becomes like the father and I had a great nurturing relationship with my father. I really was not looking for that kind of dynamic. Um, so, you know, you always had this visceral kind of lust for Shekin Bakenti and it was not the same thing with Ron Nefra. I meant it was more an idea of me toying with in my mind over time to say, you know, if, if this is my destiny, you know, this person is counseling me that, you know, polygamy based on my readiness reading could be in my destiny and, you know, telling me that basically I, I did it before in a past life and really creating this dynamic. Um, and I really do want you to review the 57th hexagram because Ron Nefriman himself, he talks about what can happen if someone is like jonesing for you and you start to really mistake that person's feelings towards you for your own. And, you know, you said many things about in the Harlem River, in the Harlem River not sorry, not in the Praxis, but in the Harlem River. I know you have that. Um, you know, you spoke a lot about clout chasing and doing things for likes. And again, this, this proves just that you aren't a real friend and, or a true friend because you know more than anyone, I'm not a, a limelight seeker. You know, I, I could post, you know, outfits of the day, post all the time. And I'm definitely, you know, kind of like an extrovert and introvert. I, I like being home. Um, if you look at my astrology, I have... Rahu in the fourth house like I value that family life that home life and the 10th house you know where I have Wajet it speaks to me having wealth and having that kind of status and things in previous incarnations so that really is not where it's at for me and that has been reflected in my life's decisions that I've made um so you know you saying that I wanted to be a, a part of the family so badly um, it doesn't add up because if that were the case, when Ron Nefriman told me that there was there could be an opening, I would have like pounced on that opportunity. But at that time, I was like, you know, no, I'm going to focus on continuing to do my rituals, continuing to really just improve myself that I could attract, you know, and he did work too, <laughs> that I could attract the person that I wanted to be with. So... Um, you know, we first met, we first met at the retreat in 2007, and one of the first things out of your mouth to me is that you were pregnant with the king's son. Now, from that statement, I could tell, like, okay, this is someone who, like, position is really important, because you could have said, you know, my mate over there or anything, but it was a very, it was an emphasis on that, like, I, I'm, you know, I'm pregnant with the king's son, and I'm like, you know, that's great for you. Um, there were many observations you know, certain entitlement and attention seeking behavior that I observed that, I, that I brushed to the side again. Cause I'm like, you know, we're all here just working on ourselves and this person is committed to improving their character and they're, you know, someone around my age that, you know, I can confide in and have, have that relationship with. So, you know, um, the, the cloud chasing, I'm just like that. I understand if the, the roles were reversed like me saying that like you saying that about me if, if our personalities were switched but you really knowing me over the years like that that is just not consistent so it goes to show like for you to call yourself a sister and a best friend like that's not best friend behavior to try to you know malign my character when you have so many years of evidence of how how i roll but um you know, I appreciate you getting me out the house because I will admit, you know, 
if it weren't for you, I would not have had the Brooklyn nightlife experience. Um, being a little bit more of an introvert, they loving loving to be at home and cook and do those things like that. And it can go to an extreme. Like I know there was times that I needed to get out and I needed to just dress up or do things. So I do really appreciate that about you know about the past. I'm not gonna throw the baby out with the bathwater and act like there was never anything good that came from the relationship. But you know because of our kind of differences in temperament that way, there would be months you know that we would go without speaking and a lot of times it would be me engaging you you know saying hey you want to come over i remember having to bribe you with like chocolate i bought some chocolate i'm bake you some cookies you know for you to like say okay i'm not going to go to this thing because there's always something in brooklyn to do you know always something that's tempting but um yeah so the kiss you say that i fabricated um you know, you were not in that room. You were not in that council. It's something that I've had so much shame about. I would not make up something like that. It's not something that I would want to be famous for. But to be very specific, on the front end, grabbed my face and kissed me on the lips. It wasn't a tongue kiss, but it was a kiss. So... This whole, you know, I'm making it up for likes and for cloud. It's just, it goes to just really prove, you know, that your claims that, you know, this is my best friend. It's like, you weren't this woman's best friend. And I know that the people, you know, reading your comments will say like, okay, honey, that, that wasn't a best friend. That was a friend of me. And that's, that's why I said what it is, you know, you've been a friend of me. So I, I just want to talk about some of the ways that I've supported you, the way that I would want to be supported as a friend over the years. Hearing your pain and feelings of abandonment from your children's father, I wrote meditation scripts with you so that you could really release that anger, that resentment, and start ushering that energy toward your own goals and toward your own future. I did the same thing with regards to, you know, a lot of the emotions you felt about your mother. Um, your performances, I was at those performances, shouting those lyrics, you know, Shaka Sis, Shaka Fly, Brooklyn all the time and when I saw the pattern of certain people in Osara Street, New York being um, what I perceive to be hypercritical of your efforts to really infuse the spiritual teachings into your music, I just, you know, affirmed you and encouraged you because to me, I'm like, here is this young person really making an effort to like make something fly, make something that people want to listen to and instead of being critical, like support and help them. And so, you know, I vowed like I, I um, was not in a position to change everyone's opinion about it, but that I just would be a support. And I was a support for you with that. Um, you know, for many years when you did not have the ideal living environment, I always hosted you for the winter solstice to make sure that you had time to, you know, do your spiritual work in an environment that would support that. So, you know, those are just some of the ways over the years that I've made an effort to be a friend to you, even though I, I have to acknowledge that you could not always reciprocate. And I don't think that it is a matter of you not wanting to, but just based on whatever was going on with you that you could not always reciprocate. Um, that that dependability and just that integrity of a good friend. Um, so I want to get to your comments. They they were they revealed a great deal and really I'm grateful for them because they exposed the hidden sentiments in the community that we were speaking about. Um, so many members eclipsed by the jealousy of Ron and for our men, but also some members like you eclipsed by their own jealousy. So, you know, as a real as a real friend that you, you claim you are, you never came forward and expressed these concerns to me. You always kept it in the background and, you know, you smiled in both of our faces and assured us that you were a real supporter of our union. And, you know, when I put up a boundary and put up that distance because I could sense otherwise, then you labeled it me being controlled or, you know, me being paranoid and all of these things. But... You know, your accusations of me going crazy or having mental illness, it really just underscores the desperation and the inability to really be impartial and look at the situation. So, um, 
you know, saying that I'm battered, that I'm abused. Do our dynamic look like a dynamic of abuse? We, I mean, people within the community have visited our home and have commented on the harmony that they see between us. And just <clears throat> saying that, you know, it's an, it, they it's an energy they love being around, you know? So, but th th these are feelings that you've harbored a long time and that other people also have harbored and that you shared these feelings with, but I'm, I'm grateful that it, that it did come out, you know? So, um, many, yeah, so I have to touch on this because you, you made comments, kind of disparaging comments about, okay, baby, you made disparaging comments about, you know, our financial situation and him staying at home with our son. So I just, I really want to touch on that because, you know, your desire was status, your desire was to be a kept wife and that, you know, we don't, we didn't really share those goals now while I would and eventually, you know, we're working so that we have that financial independence. I'm joyful working together alongside my husband for those goals. To me, I knew it would always be a drawback. Like, yes, I could marry someone 30 or 40 years my senior who may just have, you know, a lot of financial stability and assets and those things. But again, that was not my values. So for you to kind of disparage, um, you know, our decision for for me to go back to work because I'm, you know, like what, four years older than you, I have the edge and income earning potential and benefits for me to go back to work and for him to stay home with our son when really we were put in that position because the community daycare fell through because of lack of commitment by the other families, you know? So again, this is us like looking at the community, really trying to be so community, community oriented. And it's like, when that is not really a value of everyone, then it's, you know, we're, we're left to just deal with things as it is. But, you know, our steps were ordered by God through the oracles. Our steps were ordered by the Shep Sioux. So you cannot shame us because we don't share your values. You know, that trying to say, oh, you, you go to work and he, it's like that. You're, That's paying, not, you're paying all the bills. Yeah, and it's like, you, you don't even know, you know, his financial situation. There's so many assumptions made, but no one ever asks, you know? No one ever asks. Because it's, it's convenient to make those assumptions to drive that narrative that has been put out there. Exactly. So when we met, you know, you were working for Delta. Mm -hmm. um, 720 plus credit score. I was very mm -hmm. impressed. You know, no children, substantial mm -hmm. investments for someone your age mm -hmm. that shows that, you know, you were thinking for the future already at 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And even without considering, you know, his character, his devotion, um, his spirituality, he was a catch. Like, he, all, just looking outside of this spiritual community and all of that, just point blank. Um, any of my, fr like, my outside friends, they were like, where did you find this man? Okay, like, he's a catch. So the fact that he never really earned your approval is really just due to jealousy and you you would when i expressed to you like i noticed the jealousy at the beginning of our relationship you admitted to being jealous you say yeah i'm jealous but i'm not jealous of the relationship i'm just jealous of the time that you're spending with him and you know my answer to that is when people are new in relationships there there's usually a period where it's like they want to be around each other they're they're really much into each other and it does you know it tends to even out but Previous to me being in the relationship with him, I had to bribe you to hang out. So for me to finally have someone in my life, you know, that you know that I was looking for for so long. And now for you to become so covetous of my time and attention, it just really, it was off to me because I have friends from college. I have friend colleagues that I'm very close to and other people who, you know, were close to me who were just nothing but I'm so happy for you, girl. When they met him, like, this is amazing. And really, even single women, you know, these are women who weren't always in relationships, you know. So um, I know I always would reason because I, I really wanted to reason, like, you know, the jealousy is there, but so is, like, the care and so is the goodwill. And that, you know, if I was patient just over time, the jealousy, it would, you know, fade away. But 
realistically that was just very naive of me because it never did so being the second wife of the spokesperson to run and fry men you have the status that you, you were seeking you know and the relationship that you were seeking yet you complain constantly about not having enough quality time about getting your visitation skipped mm -hmm. about not having someone to take you to and fro when you're basically alone as if you were single now I only bring that up because you talked about me berating my fate and complaining and trying to blame others but I never complain about the challenges and I surely never to you you know, because that's something I would only confide in with someone who I'm certain is a friend, but I don't berate my fate. You know, the challenges that we have are the ordained challenges for us to grow, for us to become the people we need to be. But for you to kind of project that on me, like, well, I'm just angry at the world. And no, you know, you're the one who you got what you wanted, but you're not satisfied. So you need to look at yourself. So in the beginning of our relationship, we did move fast and we moved fast. God told us to slow down. We did not heed those warnings. We moved fast. Um, what I do find interesting though, is like the persecution from us moving fast when every young couple that I've talked to in the New York community, they've all moved fast in the beginning. And I do think that it's something that has to be looked at as a community, as a society to maybe make some of the norms for getting to know people more relative to, you know, the, the age that we're living in. And, um, and that's not to say to just like violate principles of truth, but, you know, it, it was very convenient for you to emphasize that we move fast, but I have to talk about why what were the reasons that you could not move fast because you almost make it seem as if you had this restraint this discipline and that i'm i was just this wild child out there just moving fast you know um you couldn't move fast you were living with your mother when you know when you live with someone you don't have that access that way you couldn't move fast because you had to move in the background you know you you did not have the ashe of shekin bakenti's wife for that courtship in the beginning so it was moving very stealthily very slowly so you know to to throw that up as you know we move fast and now we're just trying to blame people we move fast and, and that gave us our challenges but at the end of the day you know the chef su they brought us together and we've been able to you know kind of pay our dues for that moving fast in the beginning but for that to be a whole impetus to why you have so much resentment oh you you move fast and it's like who did not move fast in the beginning but um you made a statement that highly spiritual men don't wouldn't do wrong because their lack of under their their understanding and about the karmic backlash and i just thought that statement reveals so much about your lack of studiousness over the years of history of spirituality because you don't have to look very deep to find that that statement is not supported by history um so i want to get into you know you basically denying the the psychic part of what we shared what was happening with our son and i'm not a medical qigong doctor so i'm only going to share from a mother's perspective what i observed so when um Turkai Peck was very young when our son was very young he when he was really got into his fits like really angry his father was the only one who could calm him down and they've had an extremely close bond um what happened is I think this was maybe around like four or five months ago that we started noticing. Um, yeah. We started noticing him having a, much, a strong preference for me and not for his father. Now we're thinking, you know, this is just like maybe just a developmental thing, you know, where he's just having more preference for his mother and, you know, having kind of like you know i know sometimes you go to pick him up and he would be like yeah. you know yeah. like do things like that and we just thought okay this is just a developmental thing that he's going through or i'm but, with him a lot so like, yeah or that to, you're you're I'm, with him a lot so he just misses me you know yeah. um but after you did that purification in which you cut out that dark energy from round that from man from checking by kenti 
his demeanor, it, he went back to the young, like, I, I just want to play with my father. I mean, he was chasing me everywhere. I could leave without him really crying or yelling. Um, that The nap that he took after that treatment, it was a three-hour nap. Previously, we would have issues sometimes with him taking very short naps, and his sleep would be very fitful, um, very dream disturbed, just not restful. You can see, you know, sometimes he would yell out in his sleep. So for me to like see that with my own eyes as a mother, and then for you to say like, you know, that's, that's not possible. It just, it really blows my mind because you would say that you have this understanding of spirituality that's so much more vast than, you know, someone coming from a Judeo-Christian background. But then I talk about these psychic phenomena and what could happen and I think we were both very clear that we we don't think this is some oh you have a doll somewhere that you're you know it's poking kind of, or something it's no it's, it's, like it's, I, this, yeah. it's not always this conscious thing but that's why as you work on your chi you you have to you're held to such a higher standard of accountability because even the thoughts that you harbor and the feelings that you harbor um, against people can literally haunt them and literally cause neg negative effects in their lives and that's what we were bringing attention to. So, you know, mm -hmm. I just want to say that, you know, despite your slander over the years that Satur Daeb, he's gregarious, he's fun loving, he's funny. My family is very endeared to him. My friends outside of the frenemies are very endeared to him. They see the value that I see in him. And, you know, you speak, um, he worked in the airline industry for over 10 mm -hmm. years, interfacing with people all over the world so I'm this anti -social. it's like this whole thing when he's anti-social it's like this is no this is your projection because the energy you were bringing like if i don't feel welcome somewhere i'm not going to be myself so look at yourself like was i really welcoming to this person calling us the, the bopsy twins and making all of these sly comments you know to to mask your jealousy to mask your disdain it was not unnoticed by us so you spoke of me burning bridges and to that i just have to say that many bridges needed to be burnt because they were ushering in a negative psychic energy into our relationship and i was not having that but the relationships that are true and there are relationships that are true some people have reached out to us with their support some people who could never come out publicly and message us or call us or anything have come to us in dreams um, they've come through our Shepsu. Our Shepsu have let us know that we do have supporters in and outside of Osiris Set. And, and those though and, and those bridges, they're not going anywhere. So, you know, there was a lot of psychic undermining brought into our relationship. And I think had we split up mm -hmm. due to some of those some of that interference, we would have blamed one another, like yeah. you know, we would have blamed one another when really it, it really was the environment. And if you look even at our astrology, we have a very high level of compatibility. Yeah. Um, so you, you did an SOS to my biological family, to which it was just like very sad. You know, I let them know that. And to me, for you to claim to support, be a supporter of me, for you to claim to be a supporter of black love, you did a whole segment. And I was really enjoying those photos and all these of the black love, you know, um, the black love you know you put up the pictures and everything but in real life this is black love and it, it did not have your support it did yeah. not have your and support it's, it's like it's like pick your pick your rationalization you know like either in the beginning as i'm following her around i'm mooching off of her i don't have this i don't have that i just follow her around like a puppy dog now it's oh she's battered he's controlling he's manipulating it's like right. pick your rationalization which one is it going to be next week or next year just admit that you got a problem. Maybe you're not even aware that you have a problem, but you know, it's it's just, it's, it's funny. It's like, which one is it gonna be today? You know? Yeah, yeah. And you know, the people who I've let in because I did, and it was a challenging transition for me, realizing like some people who I, I thought were friends were not, I'm gonna get into the next person that was sent you know, the next friend of me that was sent next, but, you know, it was definitely a transition for me. Um, 
my family, they know that this man is my fierce protector. They know that I am loved and they don't have to worry, you know, with him. And they really appreciate that. They thanked him for that. So, you know, I'm the happiest I've ever really been in life, even with all of the other stuff going on. So for you to say that you're a friend and not to know that, and I'll get into the next part next because it was said that, you know, I'm trying to blame my bad life on people. I'm berating my fate because things didn't go. No, things things are going the way they should go. And we are enjoying our relationship. But we had to cut with a toxic situation. And instead of, you know, even trying to understand your, your response, you could tell that that was just pent up. It wasn't like, let me talk to you and get to know where you're coming from. It was just pent up. This is how you really feel. So it like proved everything, you know, for someone who's watching the video, who may be hearing the word psychic thrown around or it's not real or trying to say it's paranoia. It's like, well, why did it all come out after the video in a way that shows this is how you really felt all along and right. shows that this is what you were projecting. This is what was being picked up. This is what was in the readings. And you, you and many people just proved what we said in the first video. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, um, from one of our favorite movies, Star Wars. On, on, only a Sith deals, deals in absolutes. absolutes. So I, I can tell that you didn't watch the last videos with the still heart. And, and I understand that, that, you know, it brought up emotionalism for you, but I really urge you to go back and watch because you made a statement about, you know, good people don't throw out their, don't cast out their mentally ill and throw them away. Um, and that's not at all what we communicated. What we communicated is that stalking and harassment should not just be accepted because someone has a mental illness. Intervene in other ways that help that person, but that also protect the community. That's what we communicated, not throw them away and lock up the key. So I, I urge you to go back if you doubt what I'm saying. Um, and in regards to our son, thank you because outside of us, you were like the first person to have time with our son. Um, he, you were literally the first person and I knew that even though you had the issues you had with us because of your all set, mm -hmm. that you would be very endeared to him. And he is just someone who's very easily lovable and, and likable. And you, and you have the response You're that I thought mother. that you You're would have. Mother. You're a great mother, yeah. you know, your, your daughter is your son. Like they also, they loved on him and I appreciate mm -hmm. that, but that does not deny what happened with checking by Kenti at the naming ceremony that does not deny, you know, the energy being picked up of him not having positive feeling toward us or toward my mate and that going to our son. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's really all I have to say to you. I wish you the best. I know this is, this is the end. Um, well, it, it was already really the end, but me trying to hold on a little bit, but you know, I, I knew I could see what things were. And even though you were always assuring us like, you know, no, I'm not really jealous. I'm I just, just love y'all. <laughs> I just love y'all and all this stuff. And it's just like, you know, I had hard conversations with you over the years, like un uncomfortable conversations of things that I thought as a friend, you might never want to call me again, but I'm going to say this to you because I'm not going to depend on someone else. So for you to really feel like my life was in danger, for you to feel like I was a battered woman and all of these things, but to never come and express that, it just shows the level of insincerity. But I, you know, I wish you the best and you washed your hands of me. I've washed my hands of you and of anyone who thinks that they can bring that negative psychic energy and push that onto my relationship and to my family. I won't accept it. Kedan and Chayes, you are the next friend of me that was sent to, you know, write these statements to try to malign and, you know, undermine my character. So I'm going to start with, you know, what I've appreciated about you over the years. You definitely have a lot of strength and perseverance. You don't look like what you've been through. You share, you know, stories with me that I won't share here, but you've been a nurture to many people. The devotion to your children and to your mother, the way you cared for her when she was alive, that really endeared me to you as well. Um, we bonded over your studiousness with your spiritual work and you know that's something that we, we work on together and that's something that i really appreciated about our relationship 
I did, however, notice behaviors from you over the years that again, wanting Osarian fellowship more than anything and really always wanting to give people the benefit of the doubt, I swept them under the rug. And the real theme here is competition and jealousy, underlying jealousy. So I'm gonna talk to you about, you know, a few instances with three different men where I felt that you were trying to make like a competition. Um, remember us painting the first floor apartment and helping with that and a single gentleman coming and helping the both of us. And I remember you making comments about your butt being too big for your jeans. And it, it felt like kind of out of place. Like, why are you trying to call that attention? Now, at the time, I was not, I had readings not, you know, letting me know that that wasn't the person for me to try to pursue a courtship with. But at the same time, it just, it was very strange. And it's like, either you were just trying to, you know, fish for that man's attention or you, you feel some like competitive energy with me, which I did not have for you. Um, the next gentleman this happened with, um, you know, told me straight out that, you know, he wanted to court me really into me. And, you know, of course I go to God and it's like, this is not for me. So, you know, I let him know that and I won't say he just moved right on to you, but you were someone that he expressed interest in and ended up getting to know. And I remember you saying things like, yeah, you know, he said that he just had his eye on me from the beginning. And it, it was almost like you were trying to erase like that history didn't happen between the gentleman and I. And again, like, you know, these things my spidey sense picked up on, but of course I'm just like, you know, wave it off, it's nothing. Um, but it did happen a third time. And now with this gentleman, you know, you were claiming, you know, was showing interest and everything like that. And this is a gentleman that I knew did not have interest uh, based mostly on his goal of having a family, having a lot of children and you being out of that, that place in life, you know? So it's just kind of like, why, why is, you know, for every, every person where, and I understand that being in an environment where there really just are not a lot of men, it can create that um, kind of like cattiness and competition. But to me, it's a choice to indulge that as well. With someone you say you consider a sister, like stop trying to make it out as like every man. There's just, you know, are they going to go for me? Are they going to go for you? It's like some, some people are going to be interested in you and not me. Some people are going to be interested in me, not you. Some people may be interested in us both, but it was a definite theme. Now, um, when my mate and I got together, we did move fast and that's something that was like your one up, you know, you, you mentioned it so many times that I said, okay, you know, we move fast partly due to tweed, due to excitement, you know, realizing that we kind of found what we had both been seeking for some time. You knew that I was under a lot of pressure from Oh, Sarah said I was under pressure from my biological family and even from society to like get it together you know everyone is like you're on a clock and you're not like a man and you know get it together so just knowing all of that that you would consistently kind of be like yeah you know you move fast and you didn't always say it that way you would just say you know what well, I'm getting to know so and so and we're taking our time we're doing things right the right way and it was just like, lady, you you don't have to try to shame me because I recognize, you know, that we move fast, but I'm not ashamed of it. You know, I'm not ashamed of it. Yes, it created some things that we had to learn the hard way. It did. But for you to constantly bring that up, like it was a mark of shame that we could never overcome. The fact that we move fast in the beginning, just it really underlied your true intentions. So, you know, you, you would often say, you know, I'm getting to know so-and-so and moving slow, we're doing things the right way. And, you know, things will never materialize, you know? So when we got together and you, you claim to be so happy, I know that he remembers because I remember distinctly, you always said, yeah, girl, you know, we ritualized together and you know, I, we did this together. Like it was really a collective, like it was you and me that attracted my mate and I never, you know, expressed this to you because I didn't know, is this just, you know, me not wanting to like share acknowledgement, but truly I, I felt that you were trying to co-opt 
something that I know I had worked so hard. I mean, daily rituals and even the ritual space that you enjoyed and the, my personal shrine that you enjoyed. The reason that that energy was like that because I was in there ritualizing every day. So for the few times that you came to my place and I appreciated us ritualizing together, but to always say, you know, I'm so happy for you and your mate. Um, and you know, cause we did those rituals and I, I'm like, listen, if your spiritual power earned my mate, then you know, you need to apply it to your own life and stop trying to really insert yourself. Like, you know, take credit for something. And, and that brings me to my next point. If my mate was garbage on a trash can lid, why were you so eager to take credit and take part of this is why I helped this happen and I'm so happy for you when we had our son. I'm so happy for you because, you know, we did the, she we, we, it's all, yeah, lid. she said that, you know, that you were like garbage on a trash lid and, um, and, in one of her responses, but it's just like, oh, the insincerity, you know, and then when I put up a boundary because I'm noticing you know, even you saying disparaging things about me in front of my mate when we're just getting to know each other and him being like, oh, girl, you should you like that's kind of strange. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of strange. But, you know, I, I'm just like, I guess it has to be like overwhelming evidence. And this is something that I have to work on in my own character. I'm really just wanting to hold on to an idea of how people will be and not me being a woman who really supports women, you know, and is an advocate for women. I always want to give other women that benefit of the doubt. I'm not the person who's like, this person's hating on me. They're jealous of me because that's not the energy that I'm coming with. But just the overwhelming evidence over time, I did put up a boundary with you and you noticed it and you didn't like it. But this is the truth. When a relationship, like our relationship was new and beginning and you have people who are doubtful or who kind of have their negative you don't need that in the mix as you're trying to build something and get to know someone. And me understanding that I put that boundary up with you. So when you would call, I was vague. Everything was great. I don't care how things were going. You were not the person that I was going to tell what issues we had to work through because I already seen that that jealousy. I seen it coming out. So it's like, no, you would not. You would no longer be the person that I would confide in. And I know that really bothered you. But instead of lying and saying that I'm being abused, and that you know this man is taking me away from my fellowship do you know there there are female relationships with single women with married women who flourished under our relationship that he always encouraged so for you to spread this vitriol and you know your slander it damaged one of my most cherished relationships in Osero said and I have to say like it's something that I'm I'm still working through because I'm like the person listened to you thinking that you were a real friend and a real supporter. All the while, you, uh, again, you say you were the sister friend, you were so close to me. If you had these true um, reservation that you wanted to give me a heads up and warn me, you would have talked to me about it. It wouldn't just have come out in those, like those neck of that Tim kind of ways that it did. Now, thankfully, you know, us both being psychic, him very psychic, but me also, you know, we picked up on it and we were able to adjust how we were moving because imagine we had opened ourselves to you and all of that doubt and all of those negative things that you spewed in the email that you wrote me, you know, being poured into our relationship as we were trying to build a foundation, it probably would have, you know, blowed the house down. So, so I'm grateful about that. Um, you alluded that I had promiscuous behavior. You, you insinuated that in, in the letter that you wrote. And I just want everyone to look this up. I have Venus and Virgo, as well as the people who just know me. I know you're shaking your head like, how deep will the lies go? How deep will they go? Um, courting other polygamous families is something you mentioned. And I want to talk about that because... I was counseled by Ron yeah. Efraimen that based on my readiness reading, that polygamy was likely something that was in my future. Um, my readiness reading being Shepsetep, Osset Tu Chayas, Heru Tem Chayas, 16, line 5, going into the 45th hexagram, gathering together. So my openness to that idea was based on this 
premise that, you know, well, this is this might be something that's just in my destiny. So the one family, you say that it was just multiple families and I'm just the one family that I had an interest in, I was counseled it wouldn't be a good fit. They extended friendship to me and really provided fellowship and just, you know, getting to be around their children, getting to be around that family atmosphere at a time when I was very alone, you know, and I appreciated that. However, you know, Round Nefer Man did pull my coattail and say, you can't do that. Like, if you're not, you know, working toward a relationship with people, you can't really just be around and do all those things because feelings will still grow in the background. And when I did the reading, I did get the second hexagram and the line saying that even though there's no external manifestation, the feelings were growing and they were growing, you know? So I did, I followed counsel and I cut things off, which was very challenging to do being that, you know, this family had really shown me nothing but grace and kindness and really, you know, fulfill the need for me when I really needed it. So thank you for trying to highlight that as, you know, me just, I mean, the way that you characterize me in this email, it, it just goes to show like you were never a friend. You were never a friend, but I'm glad that the world can see and that you can stop hiding behind the, you know, I'm just this Osarian who just has goodwill for everyone. No, you don't just be honest about yourself and work on those things versus, you know, being insincere and then saying, telling the world that you're my best friend, that, that really is not right. So, um, is there anything else? Yeah, that, that's all I wanted to share. So again, thank you for the good times because it wasn't all bad. Um, I know this relationship, it, it needed to end. Honestly, it, it, it ended in my mind for me a while ago when I realized that there was not positive energy and goodwill coming toward me or our union you know i had to really put up that boundary but now you've you've outed everything so i just say you know go in peace and i will go in peace so this is my response to the things that i've been told that people are saying about my video or my response to the video people are saying that i'm I have mental illness, that I'm deluded, and that they're saying that something is wrong with the readings, that something's wrong with my perception of the readings. So to say that I am mentally deluded and I have mental issues with all of the details, with all of the facts, no one can make those things up even in their own head. And if it is a figment of my imagination, then you tell me which part is it. Because if you are then also going to say that all of it is a figment of my imagination, I would have to say that sounds pretty impartial. How delusional. So one of the things that was said was that because I said that I get headaches from other people and someone who has mental illness, Rama Heru does the same thing, then I must have mental illness. What a stretch. If you were to Google no. empaths, people who are empaths or HSPs, highly sensitive persons, these are adjectives in which Western psychology uses to describe Nekabet and Wajet characteristics. And you will see that people who are empaths get headaches, they get migraines, they also get nauseous, they also get all kinds of physical disturbances from interactions with other people. If we would look into the Maduna Terra Oracle system and list Wajet Nekebet keynote, one of the keynotes being subliminal influences and say that you can be influenced from music subliminally, then why is it delusional for you to be influenced from negative thoughts from other people? That is a far reach. So Rama Heru has been diagnosed, institutionalized, is on record of being on medication by professional mental health people, psychiatrists, psychiatrists right. right? I have never, ever been diagnosed on any type of mental health uh, medicine, nor, have there, nor has there been any suspicion of any mental illness or disturbance from my family or from people who personally personally know me 
to make such an accusation, once again, is like grasping for straws. Like, really, what do you have? That sounds pretty convenient. And as I said in the first video, right, about people not knowing me, right? I share a little bit of my background and look how quickly they took that and jumped on it and tried to use it again against me in an attempt to undermine my character. Now, when I when, when we talked about the slander, keep in mind, no, I've never I don't have that in my medical history. And no, they would know it because they never asked me. Yet this term of me being mentally ill has been pushed across the entire community. 200, 300 people, however many people now believe this. They don't have a professional psychiatrist. They don't have any of these things. But now this statement has been pushed as this is who I am, right? And like I said, this, these are the things that were done over five years. And I really thank you guys for corroborating all the things that we said. So to further show how they do not know what they're talking about or know what they're doing, I will reiterate a reading right on Ron Nefer Amen's response to the Rama Heru situation last year, May 2021, right? The reading, and this is someone who's diagnosed with a mental health illness. The reading is Seker Tem Ma'at, Ma'at Tem Chayez, 63 into 3. 63 speaks of having general knowledge, but that there's a need for an expert, right? And in paraphrasing the stress line, it says, be careful who you offer positions of power to. Does this sound like a group who has the structure or knowledge of how to deal with people with mental illness to take someone's statements, quote, conveniently when they're speaking up against the wrong done to them and say, well, they mu they're just like the person who's been classified as having mental illness. What a reach. So let's go deeper into their criteria for my mental illness, right? We already showed that the headaches are not true. Many people get headaches from interactions with people uh, as well as other physical symptoms. Childhood trauma. Kenam Sanu, the wife of the spokesperson to Ron Nefra Amen, has childhood trauma, right? And if childhood trauma is a firm guarantee of mental illness, then many of us would be in psych wards. Now, I had therapy a long time ago for my childhood trauma. I can say today that I can speak to my mother on the phone. I can say that I've helped my mother in very challenging situations in her life, regardless of what the things that she has done to me. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I'm completely over it and I've passed it, but I have made massive progress in that. And the stability in my life shows that, right? So let me add on to the fact that if it runs in the family, then there should be mental illness signs in my other siblings. My five other siblings don't have it either. They have families. They're, they're doing quite well in life. So your statement that if it just runs in the family, then yeah, he must have it too. And how ignorant is that as an African-American to say that knowing that African-Americans who are descendants of enslavement where there's a lot of trauma, a lot of mental trauma, a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder trauma in the families, then that's like saying that all African-Americans are then subject to mental illness or have mental illness. Let me also add the piece about, um, I did another reading, right? Um, when I first came to New York Hess, it was a second cycle about overcoming my childhood trauma. And I believe, I don't recall the reading, but it was all set up, forgot the hexagram, but I was already doing the work. I take that to a Sheket, which is, she is one of the founding members of Osiris Set. It was a reading on how to transcend, fully transcend my childhood trauma. And she says, she looks at the reading and pushes it to the side and says, everyone, everybody got that problem. And then doesn't even address the reading. This is counsel. She doesn't even address the reading and proceeds to talk about the clay shots, which is a term we were in a second cycle. And she starts talking about herself and how she was throwing up and all of this stuff. Keep in mind, she said, everyone has to deal with that. That's an issue that everyone has to deal with. Uh, another criteria that I'm being told that people are saying for me having a mental health issue is being very long winded in my speech. Now, if you read the book from Ram Nefer Amen, 
Road to Success, where he's breaking down the 12 astrological signs. When you get to Sagittarius, which is Tahuti, having Tahuti incarnation objective, he speaks of a Tahuti person being quite expansive in their speech and turning a little thing or bringing in, bringing in other things and expanding it way more than what is really probably required in that situation. And of course, my wonderful wife is always helping me on that because she has a lot of fire and is quite contractive in that manner. Now, other people in Osiris said who have Tahuti incarnations and people who know people with Tahuti incarnations know that people can be quite expansive. If you want to bring in not just the Zodiac, if you want to bring in Bazi, people know with people who have water can be quite expansive when they talk. So the idea that my lack of specificity or sharpness some, sometimes in my speech means that I have a mental illness is very hypocritical con considering the information that he himself has put out and is completely nonsensical considering that a lot of these books and this information is available to all members of Osiris Set. Now, let's get to the readings. Uh, Kanam Sanu said that I do thousands of readings, right? And that is supposed to mean that I clearly don't know what I'm talking about or know what I'm doing. I would like to say that a lot of those readings came before I made real connections with my enlightened ancestors and saw the things that they said to me play out and really develop that trust and develop that relationship as well as getting over some of the doubts I had in myself, even though the readings were speaking. But I ask you this, instead of, or how convenient is it to just try to blame it and say, well, he does mad readings. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Would I have to do those readings if I was getting the counsel that I needed? Right. If this is an African culture, African centered spiritual community, what do what does the African philosophy say? When someone has a problem, you look at who's guiding them. You look at the community who is around them. You don't blame the victim you, or the person who's been violated. You look at everyone else. So if I'm telling you that I'm being violated, I'm giving details, details that cannot be made up about how Ram Neframan spoke and the things that he said. If I'm giving you readings where the oracles are saying, don't, you can't go to this person. If people who are messaging me saying, especially men, saying they had this same experience with him, is that a delusion of grandeur? Is that being out of touch with reality? And let me give you a counsel, right? My Bazi counsel, because I mentioned it, right? The, at the end of my Bazi council, what was said to me that my talents, the career, my talents could bring wealth or help, help me build a family is through writing books. Now, it is in my destiny. It says that I will write books. But let me t tell me this. This is something he signed off on. If you have told a young man that he needs to get it together, that the woman he's with is on the clock. And essentially, he didn't say these numbers, but I can kind of pick up. Mm, Two years, three years, you're going to be having a family. Would writing books be a primary source of income? His own son took 10 years to write his first book. And for many authors who are watching this, would you advise a young man trying to build a family, start a family within the next two years, that his primary source of income should be writing books? Even if he has that talent, it should be writing books. That doesn't sound like wisdom it doesn't sound like impartiality. Mm -hmm. And of course, Kanam Sanu tried to say, I was paranoid to say, that doesn't sound like you're sincerely trying to help me. Especially finding out later that this person is actually interested, romantically interested in the woman that you're trying to build a family with. So the last thing I want to say about these delusions, if God through the oracles have said something about you, right? And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying everything was gold that God was saying. I'm not even saying I think that about myself. Anybody that knows me, I'm very honest, very upfront about my weaknesses and my liabilities. Sometimes maybe. You're actually like very hard on yourself. Too yeah. Hard on yourself. Too hard on myself. Even on myself. Even on myself. Like, I said like, up, yeah, you know? yeah, you're too hard on yourself. It's a uh, Herakah is an integrity thing about me just trying to be the best that I can be. And clearly from my background, you can see that work that has been done to do that. 
So if God has said that you're this way and these good things about you, if your enlightened ancestors say the same thing, if you see it, if your family sees it, if your friends that really know you see it, and then a few people in this community say, no, that's not who you are. Who really is delusional? Who really can't? So God is wrong? Then who you pledge that you will follow, you will follow readings? The chefs who are wrong, who you say that you follow? And then the friends and the family members, the people who actually know this person, who you, who you have not tried to get to know? are wrong and if everyone is wrong then what does that really say about you who's really out of touch with reality who really has delusions of grandeur and i would say that for the many people and when i mean many i'm not exaggerating the many people who are on the inside not just the outside of what sarah said but on the inside that corroborated our stories right ask them ask yourself who Whose story is really out of touch with reality? Was it our shit? Was it our stories that people corroborated? Or was it this term that um, a person who has never been even suspected of having mental illness, who has no uh, medical history of being um, institutionalized, institutionalized a psychotic you, episode. And no, no psychotic episodes, no stalking or harassing anyone. Who's really out of touch with reality? So, uh, I also want to say this, you know, because there are people watching this and they're hearing the word psychic thrown around, they're hearing this readings, throw the words thrown around and stuff like that. Let's make it plain, right? If you take out, well, I think you're undermining me and, you know, Kanam Sanu, the wife of the spokesperson to Ram Nerf Amen, tried to confuse my psychic awareness or people feeling vibes as being paranoid, right? So if you, let's take all of that out. Let's take all of it out. I don't know nothing. You know, um, 23rd hexagram, first line that says that things have not come to the surface. So you can't really take action. We don't know nothing, right? I'll, let's, re, let's repaint the story. I walk into this place. I'm looking for guidance. The leader, the elder, the high elder um, is speaking to me in a way as if he knows me, but he's speaking very disrespectfully to me. The relationships that were developing before I even went to him are starting to disintegrate. People in their conversation, when I have conversations with them, they're saying little things about things and it's not true. No one's coming to ask you about where you're from. How's your family? Where'd you go to school? You know, what are you into? Right? No one's asking these things. And you are courting a woman who's been in that community or dating a woman in a relationship with a woman who has been in that community for a very long time. 16 years. 16 years. Now, when you find out years later that this person, this high elder, was in fact romantically interested in following and attracting and trying to get to this woman, right? Because her, recollect, her statement that he said that we were together in a past life um, and it was so passionate. It was like, she really made that up? Why not make up other stuff too about it? Like, why not Why not say I was this and I was that? And the people who know her, you know, it's really sad because these people are even close to the hierarchy. They know that that's not true. They know that um, she would not lie about something like that. But continuing on with the story, if I say all of that and then find out years later this person wanted, your, you know, wanted the woman you're with, what would be the typical response without all this, all of the spiritual mumbo jumbo? You would be like, man, he was acting like that to me the whole time. I knew it didn't make sense. Was he jealous? Wait, so does that mean the attempts that he said that he was making, the people he sent me to, even some of the people themselves, were they sincere and genuine and trying to help me? Let me add something that my wife did not share in the prior video. Before I came to Osara said New York, as I said, I've been on my own primarily, sort of working at 13, but I've been on my own primarily since I was 15 years old. I have never been out of a job for more than two months of my life. And my stability in life shows that. Never been out of, never been out of work more than that. I was out of work for maybe 16, 17 months. Part of it was just challenges in breaking into um, data science. And I will add that the counsel that I got from the counselor when I was, you know, um, 
presented my reading about data science was that I would be the man in demand and that I should pursue it. And it took about 16 months for me to get a job and it wasn't even in data science. And then the pandemic happened like literally three days after I signed the offer. So I could not work. It took me another whole year to get a job, you know? And then we had issues because my wife was going back to work and we had no one to depend on. We didn't have a family. There was no one to reach out to, to help us. So I, we agreed and through you made, readings you made a sacrifice to sacrifice for me to be home with our son and to make that. I just, I just want to say that like, I'm very grateful to you for not succumbing to that pressure. That peer pressure, yeah. Because you could have said, no, peers, people are talking, you know, people are talking about me were. and questioning my manhood and all this. And, 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 and I had those son, thoughts. I did have those thoughts. Our son is going to go into a public daycare with some strangers that we don't know. And yeah. you yeah. made that sacrifice and you just, you know, you blocked out the noise and yeah. walked according to our readings, according to our guidance from our Shep Sue. And I'm really grateful for that. So for the people who would try to shame us for that decision, like... You can't shame us for living truth. You, you cannot shame yeah. us for living truth. And, and it, was, it was a challenge. I, I, I heard those thoughts of this is what they're going to say. I dealt with those things. I had a Shekamu leak counsel that I never even shared with him in a dressing room with other men, another Shekamu, about, about a, this is way before that, about a financial situation. Oh, don't get her pregnant. This guy is saying this in public, you know? And might I add about the not feeling man enough, this was a part of that whole you know, uh, crossroads about really going back into the ancestral traditions and saying, what is a man? I had to constantly ask myself that, constantly read, constantly meditate, constantly get counsel. It was its own crossroad. And I would also like to add that many of, no, I'm not even going to say that about the men. These, those, those are great men. Uh, my last thing I want to say is that I would, I want to thank the members on the inside of Osiris Set, particularly Shekamu, who have sent messages of, of encouragement and unsended their messages um, on Facebook. Uh, I understand due to your position that you cannot, you know, there cannot be a record of your support. Uh, we understand and we still thank you for your encouragement. We know that you you are with us in spirit. Thank you to the mess to the members who have messaged us their support, um, but cannot come out publicly because of the, the fear of backlash. Um, people constantly saying you are brave. We, why would people have to say that we are brave for coming out if there really was an open forum, if there was, really was impartiality to come out and present these things? Um, we know, we, we understand the fear of backlash and we also understand that you want to be the change. You want to be a part of the revolution that needs to take place there. Um, I would also add that it is very surprising how many people, young and old, have the same stories and say, we see you, we feel you. You know, it's it was very surprising. The people outside of Osera said, someone in one of the comments as they mistakenly call this cycle Osir cycle when the full moon is in Capricorn, which is sacred cycle, they s stated that the support that we had, the comments were from people who were excommunicated or kicked out. No, a lot of these people left quietly and we had their support. And there are people who are not even in Osir set. We have their support. There are family, friends, the Pan-African community, many people reaching out saying that they are with us and they're supporters. We are not alone. Very, 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 very far from it. And it is growing more and more. Now that we've dealt with a lot of the deflection and we knew there would be deflection, we want the spotlight put back on the issues we brought forth in the first two videos. I am not the body, not the person, but Osir and can therefore transcend the pain of invoking divine retribution against my person when it transgresses the law. That is a Herakuti truism from Ma'at 11 laws that you wrote, Round Nefra Amen. Round Nefra Amen, about three years ago in Chefa, you came to me and my mate when we were volunteering in there, and you said you had a dream, a dream that I was holding you high above my head. This is the significance of that dream. I am holding you up and you have a choice to make. 
you know that due to the gratitude that many of us feel toward you for reconnecting us with our ancestral teachings, the indebtedness that many of us feel that there are people who would literally follow you off of a cliff, but would you lead them off of a cliff? Or do you have the courage to take a loss and admit your shortcomings and move forward in a positive way? Only you can answer that. Our chefs who have let us know our mission is complete. We've done what we need to do and we're moving forward with our lives. We're really looking forward to just moving forward with a positive energy and with the support of our chefs who and with many other people's chefs who, you know, who have come to support and to protect us. So thank you everyone who have watched the videos, who supported us. And we truly hope that this, um, you know, this friction can usher in something that will truly be beneficial to the members of Osiris. Take care.